Navigating around an app, by which I mean moving from one screen to another, is an absolutely fundamental part of Android development. Historically, you do this using intense or fragment transactions, which in simple cases, like clicking a button, was easy enough. But what if you wanted to do something just slightly more complex? For example, hooking up a common pattern like bottom navigation. You'd need to make sure that not only your bottom navigation view actually navigates, but also that it highlights the correct button. Oh, and also that it handles the back stack in a uniform way so that users don't end up getting lost or confused. Cases like this are where the new navigation component shines. The navigation component is a collection of libraries, a plugin, and tooling that simplifies Android navigation. Beyond making the setup for common patterns like bottom navigation easier, the component handles the back stack, fragment transactions, argument passing, navigation-based animations, and deep linking. Importantly, it gathers up all of this navigation information and puts it in one visualized location in your app, the navigation graph. The navigation component works out of the box with fragments and activities. You can also extend the library to work with other screen implementations, like your custom views. Let's look at some examples of the navigation components in action with a single activity, swapping out multiple fragments. If you're wondering why you might consider a single activity model, check out Ian Lake's excellent talk, which I've linked in the notes. OK, so one way to think about the navigation component is that there are three major parts working together in harmony. These are the navigation graph, the nav host fragment, and the nav controller. The navigation graph is a new resource type. It's an XML file that contains and centralizes information related to navigation. Now, this information can be visualized in the new navigation editor that is available in Android Studio 3.3. It's a graphical editor to create this, well, navigation graph. Each of these screens are called destinations, or places that you can navigate to. In this example, they're all fragments. Now, these arrows here are called actions, and they represent the different paths that a user can take through your app. If you click on one of the actions, you can see a whole bunch of embedded information, including data passed between destinations, transition animations, backstack manipulation, and so on. Clicking on a destination, you can see things like deep link URLs and launch options. This is all part of the XML of the graph. OK, so next, we have the nav host fragment. This is a fragment widget that you'll add to your layout, assuming that you're doing fragment navigation. It's basically a window that swaps in and out different fragment destinations that are included in your navigation graph. The final piece of the puzzle is the nav controller. Each nav host fragment has a nav controller that you'll use in your Kotlin or Java code, and this is what actually instructs the navigation to occur. So if I write some code like this, the nav controller will then perform this navigation action based off of all of that information that was in the navigation graph, and it will ultimately swap out which fragment is shown in the nav host fragment. Now here I'm using the action's XML ID to specify which of those action arrows to follow. But an even better way to do this is using the Navigation Components SafeArgs plugin. The SafeArgs plugin generates code to allow you to do type-safe navigation and argument passing. First, you'll add the Gradle plugin to your code. This will generate classes based off of your navigation graph. It'll make these direction classes for any destination that has actions. And it'll make args classes for any destination with arguments. If you take your original navigation statement, you can swap in these generated classes, and you'll get something that looks like this. Instead of referring to an action by its XML ID, you're making sure that you have an action that's actually associated with your destination. You can also set arguments on the action. Pass in the wrong type, and the code won't compile. Getting the arguments you passed through is easy. Simply use the generated args class, and you have type-safe access to only the correctly named arguments. No need to worry about the key value pairs of yesteryear. So that was simple navigation. Let's talk about setting up that bottom nav. The navigation component includes an additional navigation UI library in Java and KTX extensions for Kotlin that have support for options menus, bottom navigation, navigation view, and navigation drawer. It also works with action bar, toolbar, and collapsing toolbar. For our bottom nav, you'd add the bottom nav to your XML as normal. You'd also create an XML menu with IDs that match the XML IDs of your destinations in your navigation graph that you want the bottom navigation to go to. Then you'd use Navigation UI to wire up the rest. In Kotlin, that's done with this handy extension function. This one line of code has Nav Controller handle the actual navigation, making sure to follow material design best practices as far as backstack management goes. On top of that, it handles highlighting the correct bottom buttons. Now, we have only explored a few parts of the navigation component. For a deeper trek into navigation, check out the code lab and the documentation, all linked below. Happy coding and happy navigating.